Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today we're going to take a look at Topaz Labs Denoise AI and how it will work with an image that was taken at night, or actually in this case, this was very early this morning. I went out this morning, I thought this scene looked really pretty, I had a tripod, but unfortunately I didn't have a tripod plate on my camera. So I had to shoot this image at a very high ISO, 12,800, 1 40th of a second you could see my uh, camera specs and exposure info up here. So uh, there's a lot of noise in this image. Now here's the before look. I did do a little bit of processing of it in Lightroom. So there's before and there's after. And actually all I've done is I moved four sliders, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. I didn't do anything else there. And down in the detail section here, uh, there's no noise reduction, no sharpening. There is color noise reduction at 25. That's the default uh, for my camera that I have set up in Lightroom. Of course, it did lens corrections automatically. So I'm just gonna send it over to Denoise as is and let's see how it works. So we're just going to right click right on the image. We're gonna go down to Edit In and we're gonna go down to Topaz Denoise AI. Um, I'm going to keep the settings as TIFF, Profoto RGB, 16 bits per component, resolution 360. Um, I do that because if you have an Epson printer, which I do, uh, Epson recommends that you work with resolutions of 360 when using their printers. So that's what I have there. And compression, none. So we're going to click Edit. And right now you can see by the progress bar in the top left-hand corner, Lightroom is creating this TIFF file from this RAW file. And that TIFF file will open up in Denoise AI. Now, Denoise AI has three different um, noise reduction modes. Uh, they have the Denoise AI mode, the AI clear mode, and the low light mo mode. Now, you can see I have it set up uh, so my view is the four panel view. This is on the top left hand side, the image with no, no noise reduction. Here is Denoise AI. Here is the AI clear mode, and down here is the low light mode. Now let's just move it to something a little more significant, like right there. And then it's going to re-render, and we'll see what it does. Now actually, I don't have anything set on auto. I just, whatever I dialed in last time I used this, those are the settings. And you could see that uh, Denoise AI uh, looks the best. Uh, I was kind of expecting, tell you the truth, low light mode to do a better job. Uh, but um, overall, it looks the noise AI is a little better. But again, I didn't use any auto settings. It's just whatever was dialed in. But if I go to low light mode and I just go to remove noise and I just kind of crank it up to see what it does, you can see then it looks pretty good. There's probably a little more detail in the um, lighthouse in the low light mode than there is compared to the uh, denoise AI mode, even if I crank that up. And you can see, yeah, there is more detail down here in the uh, low light mode, but I still see kind of a weird kind of noise pattern up in the sky. So what I'll do is I'll stay with the noise AI, but I'm just going to dial down the noise a little bit, maybe to 90, see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good. And let's just go with that. So we're going to stay with the noise AI uh, so that you're uh, definitely using the mode you want to use. Just make sure that it has this kind of blue box around the name. You can see where AI clear does not in low light uh, modes do not have that blue box, but the noise AI does. Uh, that means it's the active one. And then I'll just click apply. So uh, Denoise now will take that TIFF file and it's going to apply this noise reduction and it will open up uh, back into Lightroom. And from there, I'll continue my processing. Now, um, you noticed before I only moved those four sliders, highlights, shadows, uh, whites, and blacks. Those were the four sliders I moved. I really didn't move anything else. Uh, the other sliders were all at default positions, including the color noise reduction, the default position I use. Uh, for that camera, which is an Nikon Z7 II, uh, is 25, so I left that alone. There was no sharpening done and no um, luminance noise reduction done. But that's okay, um, because this really isn't an image that needs to be sharp. As a matter of fact, I'd rather keep this more ethereal look, kind of a more of a, you know, kind of, I don't know, um, kind of a a dreamy look, I guess you could say. So maybe even I come in and I take clarity down a little bit. 
give it kind of that more of the dreamy look. But then if I want to bring a little detail back, I could use texture to the right, or I can move texture to the left. Maybe yeah, I do. I, I still kind of want that dreamy look. I am kind of kicking myself, though, that I didn't have that tripod plate on my camera because you notice how these lights, they're just kind of boring. There is a little bit of a star pattern on the street lights over here on the far left, but there isn't here. You could, uh, with most lenses, if you stop the lens down, usually past like F14 or F13, if you get it down there, you know, F18, even, you know, F22, uh, you'll get a nice little star uh, pattern coming out in it from any pointed light source. And I think that would have been a really nice um, feature. Unfortunately, because I didn't have that tripod plate, I had to handhold the the uh, camera, and even at ISO of twelve thousand eight hundred, uh, f eight, I was at one fortieth of a second. So if I would have stopped that down much more, it would have really become a much slower shutter speed that I wouldn't have been able to handhold unless I brought my ISO up even higher. So it really was a shot that needed the tripod and I just screwed up. So uh, I'll come in here and I'll add a, quite a bit of saturation, I think. Now I could go down to detail and if I would just see what sharpening does, even though I want to kind of have this dreamy ethereal look, but maybe I could get that sharpening kind of affects these rocks over here in the foreground. I kind of like this white balance, even though it's off, it's just, again, that color is contributing to that ethereal look. Um, so I kind of like that, but I think you could see that if I go to the previous uh, image, there's the original image, and if I zoom in, and if we uh, go up to view, lock, zoom position, so that when I go between the two images, it'll be in the exact same spot, you can see there all the noise around the lighthouse, and there is our noise reduced image. Again, I kind of brought uh, some of that detail away by moving the um, clarity, and texture sliders down to negative numbers. So it, I purposely want this kind of blurred look. So there's the before, basically, and there's the after. There's the before, there's the after. And that's why I, I've been saying now for a long time that Denoise AI is the best noise reduction software I've ever used. And of all the plugins in the world, it's my favorite plugin. It's the one I use the most. And um, you know, I think you'll see why I like it as much as I do just by looking at this image. Now, in the description below this video, uh, what I recommend if you don't have it, they do have fully working free trials. I have a link to it. If you decide to purchase it, I do have a discount code. I'll have that all listed in the description below this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.